Hello, I'm Microsoft MVP Tom Morgan. In this short walkthrough video, I want to show you the new Microsoft Teams developer sandbox that's just launched. Um, this is a great tool for anyone doing Microsoft Teams application development that doesn't have full control over their tenant already. This can be lots and lots of people because um, you might work in an organization where the tenant is locked down and you can't just sideload applications. You uh, you might not have permissions to, you might need to provision apps and get them approved by an admin and all that can really slow down your development. Even if you do have complete control over your environment, actually maybe you spend a lot of time creating test users, creating test teams and channels. This also speeds up all of that process. So it's a really kind of nice, um, thing to have, tool to have in the toolbox for getting started with doing any kind of development, just making it easy by giving you a sandbox to go go play in. You can throw them away, they only last for 90 days anyway. You can get a new one whenever, anytime you want and it's kind of preloaded with lots and lots of cool stuff. I'm gonna show you exactly what you need to do to get started with it. All right, so first things first. Let me share my screen um, and then you can see what I'm seeing. And uh, I'm gonna start kind of completely from nothing so completely from blank and the first place we're going to go is to this web page which is aka.ms uh, m365 dev program okay aka.ms slash m365 dev program so that's a short link so if you go there it's going to take you to the uh the microsoft 365 developer program and uh, you want to join the Microsoft 365 developer program today. So I haven't been through this process yet, so I'm going to walk through it with you so you can kind of see everything that needs to happen. Um, all right, so uh, we need to select our country. Ba -ba 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 -da -ba -da -da. We'll provide our company name. Now English. Um, accept the terms and conditions of the developer program. Um, and if you would like to, you can opt in to receive uh, information and tips about the program as well. And there's some asking some questions really about you as a developer and the kind of things you're going to be doing. So I'm going to say personal projects. Oh, sorry, personal projects. Click next rather than back. And what areas are you interested in? I'm going to say Microsoft Teams are very interested in graph and Power Platform. Let's say you can choose obviously the ones that are right for you. And then I'm going to click save. Now, this is what I wanted to show you, the instant sandbox, everything you need to build Microsoft 365 apps and solutions. This is so cool. Um, this is going to be configured with 16 different users, a team sample pack with App Studio, um, and data for Graph, for SharePoint, and Office. So it's got all these things in it. Uh, as I said before, it lasts for 90 days. It comes with 25 user licenses. So it's going to create 16 fictional ones, but you can go and create your extra ones on top of that if you need to. Uh, you've got an expiry date there of Jan 5th, uh, which is obviously 90 days out. And uh, this is really cool. So uh, you can also configure all of this stuff. Um, you, If you wanted to do that, you have to manually add your own data. It can take a while. This is ready to go. This you can do. Well, we're going to do this on on the video right now. It's that quick. So I'm going to choose the instant sandbox. I'm going to click next. Uh, you need to choose a region for your data center. So I'm going to go with Europe. Uh, you need to choose an admin username. I'm just going to go with Tom. I'm going to put in a password here. Um, do, 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 do. Okay, you could have different passwords for all your users as well. Like all of the users have the same password, um, which can be different from the admin password. Or you can have them all the same. Click continue. Uh, you do need to put in a, um, a cell number. This is really just to verify your identity. So we're going to wait for that to come through. Okay, so that's come through. And now it's going to go and build up that um, subscription, that tenant for us. It's super quick. Um, I think it's done, actually. It's probably still building in the background, but let's have a look at what we've got. So we've got a domain name. So this is our new domain name. Uh, we've got this information here. So I would suggest just taking a copy of this, keeping it handy somewhere. And now you can do a couple of things. You can jump to it here. Um, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to open a new private window. And I'm going to show, I'm going to go to login.microsoft.com. And the admin account we put in was Tom. And this is the new domain. So pop it straight in there. Pop the password in. Click sign in. Uh, now you 
you've got security defaults turned on by default, obviously. Um, you can skip them for 14 days, and that's what I'm going to do for today because I'm going to throw this account away once I've done with it, once I've done this video. Um, it's probably worth kind of setting up at some point, uh, especially if you're going to be logging in a lot for your development because otherwise it's going to really annoy you. Um, I'll, I'll keep up. I'll just kind of skip through it for now, but you'll see how many times you get prompted for it. So it is actually kind of annoying. All right, and so I'm in, I'm logged in as this new user and this brand new tenant. So a couple of things we could do. So we are the administrator user. So this is um, this is actually really useful for you if you've never seen what the admin experience looks like for a Teams admin. A couple of reasons this is interesting. First of all, you might not actually be a Teams admin on your tenant. You may have no idea kind of what you're looking for when you're talking to admins or when they're asking you what you need. It can be really useful just to have an oversight of the sort of things they're seeing. And also, if you're asking them to do something like turning on side loading, turning on custom apps, it's actually really useful to be able to take some screenshots to show them because chances are they might not be super um, sure either of exactly what it is you're asking for. So that's another good reason you can use these test tenants. So that's what we're going to do first. We're going to go into the uh, into admin down here. Oh, you didn't see that. Sorry. Uh, let me go back and then start again because you can't see my screen. Right, so let's go to admin down here. And skip again. This will take us to the um, to the Microsoft 365 Admin Center. Now there's lots and lots of different places you can go from here. I'm gonna jump straight to the Teams Admin Center. Because I wanna show you the list of Teams enabled users. Okay, so. Uh, skip the tour. Okay, so we've got all of these demo users, and you'll probably recognize some of these names. Some of these are famous demo names, like Megan Brown is on here. Uh, sorry, Megan Bowen is on here, and uh, Adele Vance. Um, you'll see them in all sorts of uh, demo videos and other kind of demo experiences. Now, um, what do we do from here? Okay, so first of all, we can go and look at the policies for all of these users. We can go and log in as these users. So let's just look at some policies. So let's pick this first user here, um, Adele, and just go and have a look at her policies. So she's got global uh, org-wide default policies for everything. So that means we can go and see what they are and make sure that they're all correct. So under Teams apps, we can go to setup policies. Um, now, if we go and look at the global policies here, you can see that uploading custom apps is actually turned off. Now, if we're going to be sideloading apps, we want to turn that on. Um, it might be that when you come to set up your tenant, this has already been turned on. Um, but for, for me, as you saw, just setting up this tenant, it's all turned off. So I'm going to turn this on. This is going to turn it on for all of my test users, which is kind of what I want anyway, because it makes it easier then for all of those test users to be able to sideload apps if they need to. Um, so I'm going to turn that on. It probably won't take place straight away. Um, but that's okay. All right. So for instance, some of the things I could do now, I could take this user here. Let's just go and find this user. Uh, let's just go and copy her uh, login details. And now I can come, let's create a new tab, go to Teams. Uh, use a different account. Sign in as this user. Same password as I set up for my admin user account. And Teams will load. And I'm going to be taken to a populated Teams environment. So if you're running, you know, if you're running some software, if you're developing some applications that are looking at data in Teams, then this is really useful because you haven't got to create anything straight away. You've got a user that's got these kind of bunch of Teams. There's some unread stuff in here. There's some activity that's going on. Um, you can easily set up chats with other users as well. Um, you know, there's not loads and loads of not loads and loads of work you need to do to kind of set all this stuff up. You can see like things like the org chart is all nicely filled out for you. Um, there's lots and lots of kind of cool stuff. The other thing that all of these users have is access to the developer portal. So uh, the de developer portal is the replacement for App Studio. It's where you go to create apps and um, add app, you know, create build out apps. Uh, look at design, uh, create adaptive cards, all sorts of things. Um, and it's nice that this has been pinned for all the users as well. 
We can go to the app store as well. Um, we can look at other apps. We can upload a customized app. You can see that actually that's been that's taken really quickly. That upload um, has has happened very very quickly. That upload a customized app for side loading, which is great. Um, this is really cool. Like this is you know if you're building out something, um, then you know for an application or whatever, then this is kind of a really useful place to to be. You know because you don't have to do all this kind of setup stuff. And this isn't just Teams actually. I can drop out to Outlook for this same user. And uh, you'll see they have a proper Outlook account as well um, that is, I think, I'm not sure it's got any emails in it. Um, I don't think it has. Uh, it may have some calendar items. I'm not quite sure. No, I think it's got an empty calendar. Um, but this is like a, you know, this is a good start. This is like this user is ready to go. Um I think there's some SharePoint stuff as well. Uh, so this user also has a SharePoint license. So um, do, 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 just keep clicking through. Okay, do, 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 do. Oh, we just close this. Uh, maybe not. I think maybe this is completely empty. Um, so yeah, just that's something just to be aware of. Um, it's set up for Teams. It there's not loads and loads of oh, sorry, there's not loads and loads of SharePoint content in here. I don't think, um, unless it's possibly still provisioning, which is is possible because we've kind of just gone in to creating it and then kind of using it straight away. Um, so possibly that's the case. Um, oh, there's a there's quite a few things going on there. Where was that? I'm sure I saw like a, a whole load of. Activity just happened. Never mind. Um, right, okay, so this is interesting, actually. So look at all these um, messages. They've just appeared. So there's some element of, like, this is still being built out. So if you know this is what you want to do and you know you want to use this, then it might just be worth um, maybe giving it a day or so or something like that um, in between uh creating it and starting to use it because there's a there's some like this stuff is still being built out behind the scenes if you imagine how these tenants get put together i think they get provisioned and then all of the data kind of gets piped in afterwards so um you may experience this kind of like everything looks empty and then you come back to it you know a day later and suddenly there's a load of stuff in it so just worth bearing in mind um I would say maybe just kind of give it a few hours before coming back to it and then just seeing what you might be kind of surprised that there's a bunch more channels or sorry, a bunch more messages in the channels and a bunch more files and stuff like that. Um, because if you remember, I've literally just created this thing from scratch. So um, it is still kind of building out behind the scenes, I imagine. I think it's really nice, though, that um, it's so quick. It's so quick to create. You know, you create that tenant and instantly you've got access to it to log in. You instantly got access to all the users. Um, and you're ready to go, I think that's really good. I much prefer them to do that than to build it all out, make it perfect, and make you wait six hours. Um, this kind of building out behind the scenes, I think, is really good because the reality of you as a developer, you're going to set this up, you're going to create the tenant, then you're going to be messing around with your application, kind of uploading it, checking it, running it a few times. So it doesn't really matter that the, the data gets built in behind the scenes. All right. That was a really quick walkthrough on how to get started building your own version of the sandbox or building your own sandbox um, for, for use, uh, however you want to do it, with the new Teams sample data pack. It's free to use. Anybody can do it. Um, I 100% recommend you do this for your next development project. Even if you don't have a development project in mind, um, if you just want to go and just play around in a sandbox tenant, understand you know what the admin rules are and, and what capabilities you have in the Teams Admin Center if you don't have access to it on your production tenant. Um, yeah, this is really good. Um, so definitely go and check that out. Uh, and I'll put a link to the... Um, so the place to go for the Microsoft 365 developer program, I'll put a link to it in the notes as well. So you've got that. Hope it's been useful. Um, if it has, consider subscribing because I do lots of like walkthrough videos like this as well as updates weekly. Um, you can check out the podcast, check out my blog, lots of other places to go for all the news on what's happening in the Microsoft Teams developer platform space. Um, and yeah, whatever it is you're doing, go and create your instant sandbox and have a great day.